Hi, Alan Stratton from Eswood Turns. For this project, I wanted to make an inside-out ornament for the Christmas ornament challenge now going on. However, as I said before, this one didn't quite make it. But one thing I've learned about inside-out ornaments is that you've got to be prepared for failure uh, because they will oftentimes go like that one. So I tried again. In this one, I wanted to extend the concept a bit further and make a, an open end. I decided to use a tea light again and uh, set it on kind of a loose tenon because you have to access the tea light to turn it on and off and to replace it. That all comes in through the bottom. And that made for a very interesting experience with this one. I'll show you later. So let's make this inside out, open-ended, Christmas ornament. I've prepared four square pieces of two inch maple about 10 inches long, trying to have them as square as possible. Next I'm spreading white glue on only the last one half inch of wood and gluing the four pieces together. I don't like the craft paper alternative as it has a lot more cleanup later. This way I'll saw off the half inch that has glue and not have to clean up the surface. Now for the first turning. This is the inside profile. Despite having turned many inside out pieces, I still have trouble visualizing the inside profile. I think it is because I see the flat surface, but the true profile is 40% different. In effect, the diagonal of the square. I'm trying for a flame portion at the top, a small portion to hold a battery operated tea light, this time I'm trying to leave a flared strips at the bottom for an open end. We'll see how that works out. After a thorough sanding, I'm applying brushing lacquer. I like lacquer or shellac because it dries quickly and does not leave a streak when I have to blend newly sanded areas together. After sawing off a half inch from both ends, the four pieces of wood come apart either by hand or with a gentle tap with a chisel and mallet. After a light sanding, I'm rotating each piece and gluing everything together again. This time, the entire flat surface gets a light coat of white glue. For this purpose, I like white glue because any squeeze out will be clear. I'll let it dry thoroughly overnight. The next day, I also applied CA glue to the joints. More insurance. Me? Paranoid? <laughs> yep. Back at the lathe, I'm first applying filament tape around the ends for even more insurance. If you don't wear a full face shield, now is the time to reform and wear one. This is going to be even more dicey because I want two sections with cavities, the flame portion and the bottom flare. I'm turning a tenon on the bottom portion so I can mount it to a chuck. The ch chuck pressure on the four pieces will be even better insurance than the filament tape. I'm still nervous enough to reapply the filament tape at least while I get started. Now easy does it with a gouge. At first I cut air as the wood is square. Then I cut air as the inner cavity whips around. If I were to rely on bevel pressure to control the cut, I would cut way too deep where there is an inside turning. So very light cuts are in order. I keep the speed high to lessen the air effect. Now I have four slats joined only at the top and bottom. The wood is moving and I get chatter. Nothing is solid anymore. I'm just waiting for this thing to explode. Slowing down is not really an option. The only thing I can do is to take very light cuts. Now I sand it, starting with 80 grit to take out the chatter. Normally I slow down the lathe speed as I sand. This time I'll keep the speed high. Rather than press sandpaper against the wood with my hand, I'm holding the opposite ends and letting the middle contact the revolving wood. 
Yes, it may round the edges a little, but they are too sharp to risk contact with my fingers. I'll sand up through the grits and do some sanding with the grain with the lathe off. Whew! I made it to finishing with no explosion. How about some brushing lacquer? Maybe I can get an ornament out of this after all. I don't think the top will hold together to hang directly. On other ornaments, I've had small portions come apart. So I'm carefully reducing the top to 3 8 inch tenon. Later, I'll turn a finial to cover it. I used the bandsaw to trim out the bottoms. That is when the piece broke at the top tenon. Disappointing, but I think I can still save it. I had planned for a top finial that would be complicated by having to mount to a tenon. I prefer it the other way around. But since the top broke, I will still have the tenon, but I also want a cupped portion around the tin area for the tops of the wood pieces. That wasn't too bad. The final piece is a platform for the tea light to sit on. I'm integrating the platform with a lower finial. The first thing is to cut a tiny tenon below the platform. I'm disguising the tenon with a small round over, then reverse the platform into a small chuck jaws to finish turning the finial. Assembly consists of taping the slats together and inverting them into the top finial. I turned a small piece with a cone on one side and hemisphere on the other. I'm gluing this into the top of the slats with CA glue. Whew! My ornament and I survived, just barely. I've come to the conclusion that when I do an inside out turning, I have to be prepared for failure. Many things can go wrong. But if I can finish it, I can be justifiably proud of the result. I can see ways to refine this ornament, but for now, it's a great keeper. That's all for my inside out ornament with flashing LED. Please give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to my, on my website, and tell your friends. Please wear your full face shield. Goggles are not enough protection. Don't wait to realize this later. I'm Alan Stratton from As Wood Turns. Come back next week for a new wood turning video.